You here from Japan and heading to Malaysia after this. What do you hope to achieve? Who will you be speaking to? Will there be any announcements? I know, three in one question. Yeah, three in one. So <laughs> we're having a terrific week here. As you say, I've been to Japan. I'm here. Uh, while here, I'm also meeting with the economic ministers of New Zealand and Australia, and then I carry on to Malaysia. And it's really just, you know, President Biden has said over and over that America is back, and this is, you know, proof of that. You know, I'm here. I met yesterday with the Prime Minister of Singapore. I'll be meeting the Prime Minister and Economic Ministers of Malaysia. We're, America has been in this region for decades. It's an incredibly important region, the Indo-Pacific region, to America and our economic interest and our partnership. So I'm here really to fortify those relationships. We've heard from uh, President Biden how he wants a more resilient supply chain, and that message was delivered when the Vice President was here as well. Uh, when you talk about a more resilient supply chain, Chain. What exactly are you talking about? I mean, you're about to go to Malaysia to talk exactly about that. How does it look like? Yeah. You know, for so long in our supply chain, the mantra has been just in time. And now we realize the vulnerabilities of just in time. We need to move to just in case. We need to have redundancy. We need to have diversity. And so we are here, I am here in the region talking to um, companies that are in our supply chain and ministers here to say, let's collaborate with our partners. Tomorrow I'll be in Malaysia. A, a good part of America's supply chain is in Malaysia. Some of the factories went down due to COVID outbreaks, which had disruptions, obviously, in America. Uh, some of the factories went down due to natural disasters. So we're saying, okay, how do we work better together? How do we improve uh, resiliency and transparency so we get rid of these choke points and bottlenecks. We have to talk about trade. Uh, we heard from U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai talking about a possible recoupling with China. Uh, in a new normal, in the area of trade between the U.S. and China, what is that exactly? How do you define it? Yeah. Well, we want trade, obviously. We want trade that's good for U.S. business. Exports are good for U.S. business. But it needs to be, uh, China needs to play by the rules. They need to uh, respect our IP. They need to live up to their commitments. You know, right now, for example, in the so-called phase one deal, where the Chinese committed to purchase a certain amount of you know, aircraft and agricultural products, they're not doing that. They're not living up to their commitments. So, you know, we want a level playing field. We want to, everyone to play by the rules. And then, of course, we do want trade and exports, good for American business. The U.S. has also talked about using new tools to address Chinese practices. What are these new tools? And are you looking at deploying these new tools along with your allies? Absolutely. So President Biden is so clear about this. You know, first and foremost, we invest in America. You know, we just two days ago, the president signed a trillion dollar package, biggest investment ever in American infrastructure. And then we work with our allies, which is why I'm here in this region. You know, we, we want to develop a more resilient supply chain with our allies. Uh, here in Singapore, for example, or in Malaysia, or in Japan, they are key partners in uh, advanced manufacturing in the supply chain. So we need to work with them so that... But what are these new tools? Well, that is part of it. So, for example, we I am here laying the groundwork with these countries to come up with an economic framework for how we work with countries in this region on supply chains, semiconductors, digitization, cross-border data flows, really uh, decarbonization. So going beyond the limits of a traditional uh, free trade agreement to look at other aspects. Those are kind of additional tools. Uh, the, the U.S. has been pushing for an opening of uh, Chinese industries. We're seeing that partially in the finance industry where uh, big U.S. Uh, companies are owning their JVs in China, but not the case with the big tech. And in fact, it's going the other way, especially with the sanctions imposed on the likes of Huawei, ZTE. Are you concerned about that? Um, am I concerned about that? Look, what, what, what we are doing primarily is protecting America's national security interests and our economic security. And as I said, I mean, China uh, has a history of engaging in coercive, anti-competitive 
uh, behavior. And so we're going to do what we need to do in order to protect American industry and protect American workers and protect American technology. Mm. And speaking of technology, uh, in order to get around U.S. sanctions, we've had Huawei selling its high-end smartphone business to a state-owned company. I mean, how do you view that? And would you consider sanctions on these new entities? So the sanctions are out of my uh, remit, so I'll refer you to the Treasury Secretary. But again, I would say this. We are first and foremost committed to protecting American industry and American workers, American national security. We have to use every tool in our toolbox to make sure that American technology isn't used by the Chinese in ways that are at odds with our national security. So, uh, and we're very serious about that, and we'll do what is necessary in order to protect America. Secretary, just one final question, and that has to do with the chip sector. We know that the U.S is trying to get data on chip manufacturing. How will that help build a more resilient supply chain? And are you concerned that other countries would adopt a similar policy, getting data from U.S. companies? So it is important. I, I am the person who is leading that effort, and I did it after a consultation with companies in the chip supply chain who told us there is a lack of transparency. The producers are saying, where are the chips going? They don't have a clear demand signal. The consumers are saying, where are the chips going? How come my allocation was cut in half overnight? So they really asked us to increase the transparency in the supply chain, which increased trust in the supply chain. It's a voluntary effort. It's not compulsory. We are going to keep the data strictly and completely confidential. But I do believe that increasing transparency will reduce the bottlenecks. 